Hey guys, today we are going to talk about nine pretty strange and out there and valuable cards that have recently taken off. Uh, we will begin with Opt. Opt is a $56 foil from Invasion. Before, it wasn't worth a lot of money, mainly because it wasn't modern or standard legal. So Opt is from Invasion, meaning you can play in Legacy, but you cannot play in Modern. And that has a huge effect in its price. Now, we will see. I mean, it's a one blue instant that allows you to scry one, essentially, and draw a card. We know Visions is one of the most played cards in Modern, so Opt should also follow. Very cool card. And something that I, I mean, if you knew it was going to be reprinted, you could have made a lot of money from this card. Next, I'm going to talk about one of the bobbles. And once Iconic Master comes out, I am going to go over the price drop of the other bobble, which is an uncommon as well. Urza's bobble is the real deal. It has not dropped up, dropped down in price since its inception, uh, since its recent price uptick and i feel like it's going to hold the reason that it might hold is when something very similar gets reprinted that card tanks and the other card that's not reprinted kind of just stays the same or goes up a little bit now we know misha's bubble is going to tank which makes probably urza's bubble in a very very good place right now the other lodestone bubble is also in a good place right now Surprisingly, but this one is common. Fifth edition is not a particularly valuable set, so you can go look at the bulk, and I bet you it's pretty good. Next, Zodiac Rat. This is a $62.50 card as a common. So, mm, I like all these Zodiac animals. Obviously, Zodiac Dragon being a good one. A 1-1 one, one with Swamp Walk for one black is not something that most people would be afraid of, but it is a rat. So in Rat Tribal, you probably would play this, and it is very, very hard to get hold of. Portal Free Kingdoms, my best guess is eventually all valuable cards in that set will be reprinted into Oblivion because there's so much great value in the set. They just pretty much took all the good cards, renamed them, and now the Imperial Seal, which is Vampiric Tutor, is like $600 compared to Vampiric Tutor at $40 or $50. Alright, so here I'm going to talk about just the random bulk legends that have been trending up and up and up in time. Juxtapose, this card was reprinted in... I forget what edition it was, but it was not. it's not valuable but all rares and legends has a value. Just like how I believe all Planeswalkers. So whenever I see a Planeswalker below $5, it's curious, and at the same time, it might be interesting to look at it. Uh, whenever I see a legend card under $5, it's interesting to look at, and I don't know if it's going to hold over time. If I had to bet on one of these scenarios, I would actually bet on a legend card not being $5 as opposed to a Planeswalker not being $5. That's for another issue. I think they are printed way too many Planeswalkers and they're not actually special or unique. In fact, some of them are literally a combination of the previous Planeswalkers into one new, more expensive Planeswalker. Okay, cool. Let's talk about this one. I do not know why I didn't realize this would have been a 50... I say I'm going to say 50, but it's probably trending to $50. It's a pirate with guns. Portal Second Aids is a very interesting set. Uh, it is a set I loved because they had guns in it. The Night Stalkers, they all, all had guns. The Pirates had guns. And it was like kind of a more, I don't want to say like fantasy realistic, but everyone had guns in the set. And now Magic does not print guns. I mean, they print like magic guns, I guess. In like ships that can fire cannons and stuff like that, but it wasn't like this type of gun, right? I think it's interesting. Uh, this is clearly the real deal. 
uh, I know it's a real deal because there's not that many pirates out there and some people want to make a pirate deck and this is a rare from a very old and very unopened set. Portal Second Age is not something common. Talking about the obvious, this vampire is incredibly good. Uh, it reminds, it doubles your mana, which is already good for six, and then it's a four four, and it gets really big really fast. The only one thing I have against it is it's not legendary creature. I think it would be a really good legendary zombie, Z legendary vampire. I was thinking of that other zombie dude. I like it. I think it's actually quite good. And I feel like it will keep going up in price. It's around the price point of $20 where it makes it very attractive for Wizards of the Coast to print it, reprint it in something. Maybe iconic, maybe 25th Masters it will be there. It's not in iconic Masters. It will just kind of continue to tick up in price a little bit and a little bit, a little bit until it's ready to be reprinted. Most cards in Magic will be reprinted. Kalidus. Now, this is a good one. I like it. It is a mythic. So all the mythic zombie vampires. I keep saying zombies because I want to. Zombie tribal and Amaket is finally rotating out, and maybe in my that's the deck I have. So I'm a little upset. I mean, Amaket and Our Devastation is still fine, but the other zombie cards in Aldrich Moon are rotating out, and that is going to mean I have to find a new deck. So vampires, all the old vampire legend legends that are mythic or mana producers or just good old mythics have been seeing a rise in price as people go ahead and make it vampire decks it's quite interesting when you see what happens first there's the dragon decks then it was all the wizards and now it's all the vampires that are going up in price which means the cats there's not well i guess brimaz is the big king kitty and there's not really that many cats but yeah all right, let's talk about this card. I think it's very, very underrated at this moment in time. It is from Time Spiral, an older set. And it's not a bad card, even if you play as a one-off by itself. We know Slivers will come back. I know they will be back. So it may... So one of the interesting parts that... I may do now that my PayPal account is un unsuspended is invest in long term tribal because I know every year they will have a commander and should the one of the commanders decks be slivers and this not be reprinted again it's a gamble because you don't know if they're going to reprint it so great they're going to make a sliver deck oh they hit your sledge and now it's worthless or not worth that much money because it's every single deck Anyway, let's finish off with the last card, which is a standard card, Hostage Taker. This card is a real deal. I had it in pre-release. I went to pre-release. I know I said I wasn't going to go, but I then I read a comment that said I can just go to one and not, not buy in boxes and buy singles. I was like, yeah, I guess that's reasonable. So I didn't even go to midnight one. I went to the Saturday noon one. Actually, it starts at one, but I don't know. They advertised it at noon, but they didn't start until 1, which is kind of like a, they baited you into sitting in a store doing nothing. And this was one of the cards I had, and I can tell you it was very, very good. Um, it's something that in Limited is amazing, and I imagine in Standard it will also be good. Why not? I mean, it is a great card. Great artwork. And I do expect should blue black be a good deck. This should maintain its six dollar price point, which for a rare is very very good. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.